So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to welcome everybody. My name is Amanda cook Festman, and I'm chair of the IVCC diversity team. And we are really excited to be celebrating Native American History Month with you uh, for the second time. Um, and so I want to introduce our uh, second presenter for Native American History Month, um, and that's Kim Sagathis. And Kim is a member of the Ojibwe Nation, and she is also an Illinois Rhodes Scholar. So she has a lot of programs. We were just talking about the programs that she can put on. We hope to have her back next year. She says she does uh, cooking, which we've been wanting for a long time. But we're really excited the program she has here for you today. She's going to be talking about the history of Native American dance and music, and I think leading us in a drum circle. So I'm going to turn it over to Kim Sagathis. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I tried to sneak in here, but I don't think it worked. You probably heard me. Wabuzu, that means welcome in Ojibwa. I am an Ojibwa woman from White Earth Reservation. My family is from White Earth. Um, that's up in the northwest corner of Minnesota. It's about an hour no east of Fargo. Has anyone ever been up that far? One brave person and another, okay? Um, much colder than it is here, believe it or not. But anyway, my family is from White Earth. My grandfather was born and raised on the reservation. My father died when I was a year old, so I, was mo I moved into the inner city of Minneapolis, where I grew up Irish Catholic. My mother was not Native. So I knew I was Native, but I didn't know a whole lot about it. And it wasn't until I started to have children, one of them sitting over here, Michael, <laughs> that I decided it would be a really good idea to investigate that side of my family. And so I was able to track them down. We had lost uh, touch. And um, I was able to track them down. And I flew into Lafayette, Louisiana, and, start, and met my relatives and started my native education. That was, <coughs> excuse me, about 30 years ago, give or take a few more, because I don't want to tell you how old I am. But um, that's, it was a while ago, and I still, to this day, I still work on my native education. I don't think, it, and this is a perfect place to say this, I don't think education ever stops. I think you just lifelong learning all the time, um, picking up new stuff. A lot of times I do these programs, I learn from the audience and the people that are participating in the program as well. So it's a cultural exchange of information. So if you ever want to know anything about Irish stew or any, any um, German food, I'm your girl. <laughs> because I know how to cook all of that as well. But I also have learned some native, um, some native recipes, some that we incorporate into our Thanksgiving. So if you're interested in that, you can come and ask me about that later. <clears throat> you might have noticed I have a kind of a weird voice today. I have a cold, so I apologize for that. Um, if I'm coughing, I brought my handy dandy water bottle, so I think I'll be okay. Well, music was very, very important in every single culture, okay? And the natives were not you know, we're not um, any less, wasn't any less important to them. It's how we celebrate, and it's how we celebrate as Americans, and it's how we celebrate as Native Americans. The term Native American and American Indian, a lot of people think that's interchangeable, and a lot of Natives agree with that, and some don't. If you were born in America, which I'm assuming most of you were, yes? most of you, then you are a Native American. You're Native to this country. <coughs> American Indian is a, is a little bit different. It means that we're a culture that was here um, when America first was just a land. Native Americans have a different way of looking at things. Um, we look at the land, for example, as something that we don't own. Okay, and so we are here to be stewards of the land and to make sure that it's ongoing for generation to generation. And so when the Europeans came over on the Mayflower and other ships and the president and others started to make treaties with us, we didn't quite understand what that was about because we always believe that the great creator owns the land and we are just responsible for the upkeep. So we couldn't figure out how you could own something that belonged to somebody else. And so the treaties were signed, but I don't think necessarily we knew what we were signing. Because again, we had a different mindset. Now of course, some of the treaties didn't hold up very well. 
Um, we were moved off of the land, and that's what happened in the state of Illinois. Can anybody name what the tribes were that were here probably like 1800s? Does anybody have any idea what tribes would have been in this area? Potawatomi, yeah. So what is the state of Illinois named for? Illini. The Illini, yep, everyone forgets for Illini. They're a huge group. So the Illini, the Fox were here, the Sock were here, Dakota Sioux was here, there were some Ojibwa here, there was some Ho-Chunk here. What's the difference between Ho-Chunk and Winnebago? It's the same, yep. They were known as the Winnebago for a long time after the Europeans came over. They petitioned court and other things to change their name back to the Ho-Chunk. The reason they did that was because Winnebago means stinky Indian. Okay, and it was a name that was given to the natives by people that came here. They came here, the Europeans and others. And so we didn't like that name, they didn't like that name, so I changed it back. Mm -hmm. So the, the Indians that lived in this area included, who was like our most famous Indian everyone's heard of? Black Hawk, yes, Black Hawk, others too. But Black Hawk, everyone in the area pretty much knows about Black Hawk. He was a chief and he lived in the area and he was um, friends and not so friends with other tribes that were also in the area. You know, the Native Americans used to have a summer place where they would have a place they would be in the summer near the water. So they would be by Lake Michigan or any kind of um, river. And in the winter they moved inward because nobody ever wanted to live by the water in the winter. And what happened to Black Hawk is that he moved from his summer home, basically, to his winter home, and then he decided to come back because they go back and forth, they were nomadic. They went back and forth to the same camp. And when he got back to the, in the spring to the summer home, there was Europeans living there. And so he didn't understand that. Again, it all has to do with the mentality at that time where they did not understand how people could just move in where someone else was living. So how many people ever go somewhere for the winter time? Like maybe you go to Florida or maybe you go on vacation somewhere. So how would you like to come back and there's people living in your house? Okay, so it didn't work out well for him. And um, it didn't end well for Black Hawk either. But the Woodland Indians that lived here, they did go back and forth in the summer and in the fall. They planted gardens in the spring. They had celebrations throughout the year, just like we do. And so their celebrations included, included naming ceremonies and harvest ceremonies. And so it was, a, it was a, a big deal and music was a huge part of their life. And so I have brought with me today some instruments and we are actually gonna get up in a few minutes and we are going to um, get into a powwow circle. If I can talk you into it, I hope. But I'm gonna talk with you a little bit about the instruments that are on my table. Okay, so most people know what this is, right? Brain stick. Brain stick. Okay, this one has something special in it. It's an animal that you don't want to sneak up on. It's not a rattlesnake. Yes, that's what's in here. How these are made are different. Each, each maker will make them differently. This one is hollowed out on both ends. There are dowels, wooden dowels, that are pounded in. <coughs> when <coughs> the porcupine needles are put in here and the ends are stopped up, this is what it sounds like. If you didn't have the wooden dowels in here, they would just clump to the bottom and clump to the bottom, and so there would be no noise. And so they have to have the dowels in there. Now, how many people have ever seen those really, really old movies where the Indians are riding over the plane and they're going, hey! and they're yelling and waving that stuff. Anybody ever seen that? Well, that's actually incorrect. Um, because what happens if you shake this, there's no sound. So eventually, as you're shaking this, the sound will go away. So how you actually play a rain stick is you put half of what's in it on each side, and then you shake it on its side like this. 
And so this one is actually made of cactus wood. The other one that I have over here, my son Michael made when he was about 10 or 11. This one is split in half. The dowels are put in and then it is put back together again. This one has beans in it. Completely different sound. Okay. I think, is this pine? I believe it was pine. Pine. It, uh, no, it's cedar, sorry. Oh, it's cedar, okay. Okay. Um, all right. I also have brought with me. How many people know what this is? Drum, yeah. Okay, so I brought a couple drums. Okay. And a couple toms. These are called toms. They sound different on each on each side. It just sounds different no matter which one you're playing. So everyone knows what drums look like. Um, okay, and then I have my own my own drum. Women were allowed to play drum. However, they are not allowed to play the big the big um, powwow drum. They are only allowed to play the hand drum. It's very rare to see a woman playing a powwow drum. So this is mine. This is one of my drums here. Looks like this. And this is the back. If anybody's interested in how it's put together, kind of. Okay. And this is my tom. Now, the interesting thing about a drum is that it's considered a female instrument because it represents Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is a woman. And so, um, interesting, we always find it interesting that women aren't allowed to play the bigger drums because, again, those are also female instruments. But when you play the drum, you always play it with a steady beat. So it can be or like this or like this always a steady beat because it stands for the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Okay, and you don't want a heartbeat personally that sounds like this. Because you'd be in the ambulance, right, going down the street. And so you want to always have a steady beat. <coughs> okay, so um, women were allowed to drum and sing. They were allowed to sing to their children to sleep. How many people in here sing their kids to sleep? or got sung to sleep. Does anybody remember? Okay. Yep, I have four, soon to be five, um, grandchildren. And so I, up until the time they can reach out and grab the drum, um, I have always sang to them. So I thought I would sing to you today an Ojibwa lullaby song. So hopefully you won't fall asleep. But I'll understand if you do, it'll be okay. drums. Um, they also use them for other naming ceremonies and other things. When the children are born, they're not named right away. They, they wait for uh, months up to a year or two before they actually are given a name. And the reason that happens is because they want to see what kind of personality that they're going to have. And that's how then they're aptly named. Later on down the road, if they outgrow that name, then they can have another naming ceremony and have their name changed. So it's one of the only cultures that actually does that, where you change your name more than one time. Um, a little bit about this noisy outfit that I have on. This is part, this is a dance that is every tribe has this dress and does this dance. It's called the jingle dress. Has anybody ever heard of the jingle dress? Okay, it reminds me of the '60s fringe. You know, my mom had this dress where she had fringe and it was a back and forth. These, um, this, when I put this outfit on, I'm adding 40 pounds. It's got 365 jingles, what we call jingles on it. And 
traditionally these were snuff can lids that were rolled up over a stick and then they were taken a piece of material and they were sewn on the dress. So it took nine months for the person who made this dress for me to sew it all up because 365 jingles takes a while and it, each one stands for one day of the year. And the story of the jingle dress is that it's a healing dress. And so one of the dances that we have learned as, as a um, uh, tribe and as other tribes have learned is the jingle dress dance. And the jingle dress dance is actually done by younger um, girls, young girls that can start very, very little. I've seen five, six year olds out there dancing. It's mostly for younger women. And what it is, is it's 100 years old this year. It, the story is, is that after World War, is it World War One? I? I never can get those right. Thank you, <laughs> just hold your finger. Um, there was a Spanish influenza um, that was going around and one of the native girls got really, really sick and her dad prayed to the creator to please give me something that might be able to help my daughter because I know she's going to die. And so he went to sleep and he had a, he had a dream that um, the Great Spirit came to him and said, I, you need to create this dress. It needs to have 365 jingles on it. And you need to have your daughter dance in this dress. So he woke up, he told his wife, and they set about putting this dress together. Now, by the time they got it done, his daughter was very, very ill. She was on the, the point of passing away. But they put the dress on her and they held her up and then helped her move. And they did that every day. And as, as she got up every day and moved, the dress started to heal her. And so this dress is known as a healing dress. So for anybody who is dancing the jingle dress dance, in a competition or just as an exhibition. They're always thinking about healing and what healing needs to go out to whoever is watching. So if you know your family's going through a tough time or you know someone, someone around you is going through a tough time or maybe they're dancing for the elderly or maybe they're dancing for little children that are very ill. There's all, all kinds of reasons that we dance in this breath. We do dance for the women that are taken off the reservation and disappear. That happens a lot. Um, women are there one minute and they're gone the next. So they're sold into, into sex slave um, rings. And so we dance for anybody who needs to be healed. And so that's what this is about. And it is a, a healing dress that every single tribe has in the US actually. So what I thought I would do, one more thing. <laughs> Can't hear them, but there's actually then goes the next. What I'm going to do is I thought I would teach you a little bit about powwow life. How many people have been to a powwow before? Okay. You know when you're watching, you're sitting there watching and they say, everybody come on out here. You're all invited. And you kind of look at your friend and you go, I am not going out there. I don't know what I'm doing. And they're going to laugh at me or get mad at me. Nope, nope, nope. So what I'm here to do is to teach you the right steps so that when the next time they go, come on out here, you actually feel confident enough to come out and dance with the dancers that are out there. And so what's in here is Santa's Jingle Bells, okay? And um, I got, I have a bunch of these and I have my drums and my rain stick. And um, I thought what I would do is see if I could encourage people to come up and grab an instrument and we're gonna make a nice, probably oval, since we've got kind of a long space here. And we're gonna make our own music and I'm gonna teach you how to do some of the steps that you use at Pow Wow. So if you guys wanna come on up, all you brave people. If you don't come up, then we know that you are taping us for Facebook, so. <laughs> all right, so back the circle up so we're all in it. Make sure you grab an instrument so you're making some noise. 
Do you want to join the circle, Mike, or not? Okay. I didn't want to force you. You didn't want to join. Does anybody else want to come up? Okay. We need help with our music. So please take a video you can sit right where you are and play it. Okay? That's a sorry circle. Oh, dude. No. You guys are hoping I wouldn't have to be. I don't know. All right, everyone should have one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to think about. We're going to get a beat going with the drum as we're moving and making. Um, making noise with our instruments, we are going to think about people in our life, it is Thanksgiving time, who might need a little prayer and who might need a little healing. It could be ourselves, it could be somebody in the room, it could be somebody hundreds of miles away. So what you want to do is, this is kind of a prayer that you're sending out to people, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start the drum. We're going to get a beat going, and then we're going to add the rain sticks, and then we're going to add the jingles. Okay. Okay? All right. So, you ready? Yeah. Okay, add the rain sticks. Okay, add the jingles. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to move, and you can watch me until I get over there by her. And then we're all going to move. to go backwards. Um, you can't you can go forward, turn around and go backwards. You can go to the side. Okay, but you can't back up in this dress. So <coughs> what what I the beginning part where we're going forward is actually what you are going to do when they call you into the circle to dance. So when I teach you this one this is actually what you're doing. Most powwows are in a gigantic circle, right? They're in some civic center, some auditorium somewhere, and everyone is dancing like this. And that's what they're doing. So that's what I'm teaching you. So, when, because you don't want to be the only one doing this. And everyone else is going forward. So I'm teaching you the forward step, okay? So you're gonna go up, and basically you're, you're bouncing on your feet, on, the, on your toes, on the balls of your feet. And then you turn and you bounce it the other way. Back. All the way back. And then you turn again. Okay? So we're going to go slowly up, turn around and go slowly back. We're going to do that three times. Okay? Try to stay on the balls of your feet. Okay? Um, because it's very easy to do that. Unless you can't, which is fine too. But the proper way is on the on the on your toes. Okay, so let's get a beat going. Let's go. 
here, Michael, who um, is going to talk to you a little bit about the native flute. I have a native flute. I do not play well. So um, he plays lots better than I do, so he gets dragged along. ourselves with the flute as if it were a part of our soul or part of our spirit. Um, to play the flute is a very spiritual thing, so only one person plays a flute. I can't play my mom's flute, she can't play mine, as we believe our spirit is part of the flute as we're playing. Uh, mixing the two would probably not be a good idea, so we don't do that kind of thing. Um, my flutes are made out of uh, aromatic cedar, it's a natural cedar. We get them from um, usually the northern United States. Uh, my flutes are made from a company called High Spirit Flutes. 
I love this company, they do a great job. I can make a flute, but I'm not the best at it. Uh, but I do polish this guy up quite a bit, and keep it nice and shiny and everything. Um, my fetish on here is a uh, red tail hawk. That happens to be my personal totem. Um, so this particular flute was made for me. Um, it's got deer skin on it as far as the leather accentments and uh, little designs on there and stuff like that. But uh, when we play the flute, we don't typically play classical type of songs. Um, I know very few classical types of songs. When we play, we play to whatever is around us in nature. So I'll play to the waves on Lake Michigan. I'll play to a bird flying. I'll be in my kayak playing while I'm fishing. Just depends on what's around me in the area. Um, I annoy the girlfriend sometimes when I play in the car because Illinois is very hilly and I like to play to the, the hills in Illinois. It's kind of fun. Um, I think it's a very calming sound. Uh, it's slightly haunting when you get into the deeper notes. Uh, this one just happens to be an A. My other flute doesn't want to play very well today, so I chose this guy. He wants to play a little bit better. I also noticed that flutes, especially these types of flutes, will tell you if they want to be played in a particular time or not. There's times where I'll pick up a flute and it just sounds like terrible, terrible. And I, it's tuned and everything's ready to go, but something about the moisture in the air or something, it just doesn't want to play. So this one wants to play today, so we'll see how she sounds. generally. Um, it's more of the, the drums that you're going to hear there. The flute is actually, in, in the native culture, is considered a courting instrument. So courting, dating kind of thing. And as a young man, you would have looked over your village and been walking along and saw a girl who would have caught your eye. And you would have started to court her. And part of that would have been that after supper, after the last meal of the day, um, there was a fire that was burning outside, and you would have sat down outside by the fire and played your native flute. If the girl liked you, she would ask permission, but then she would come out and sit with you while you played your flute. If you were out there a while and nobody showed up, that's a bad sign. So you would uh, definitely pick your food up and get out of there before anybody noticed that nobody showed up. Um, but it was, it was the lure of the flute that caught the woman's attention. And if she came out to sit with you and you courted her uh, for a while, you were then allowed to go into a marriage with, with this person. Interestingly enough about marriage in the native culture, back, way back when, um, it wasn't the $3,000 wedding dress that we see now. It was very simple. <laughs> they had rituals that were very simple. They had um, a sponsor, which is like our best man and our maid of honor, matron of honor. And that couple actually were married to each other and they were there to help you through the first year. Very difficult that first year. First year is always the hardest, they say. But especially in the native culture, because if you can imagine, as a young man, marrying the girl that you love and you want to be with, and then taking all of your stuff and moving into her household. So in her household, her teepee or her lodge could have been mom and dad, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandma and grandpa. Um, there could have been a lot of people there. And you were expected to live with that family for a year. After the year was up, you could decide, you two would decide whether or not you wanted to stay together. That all started with that native flute. And a flute is considered, the native flute is considered a male instrument. 
Women do play flutes and they do drum, but um, most this instrument happens to be considered a, an instrument for a male or a man. So they're taught quite young, actually, how to play. Are there any questions about anything that I've talked about or anything you would like to know about that maybe I haven't brought up? Flutes can be very interesting, like the, the song and the text around the flute. Say that one more time. Flutes can be very interesting, yeah. you know, the, the text around the, mm -hmm. of the flute, or just how you play it. It just it depends on the flute. There's um, each flute has its particular its own particular sound. I can break out the other one so you can kind of hear the tone difference. Um, but the raspiness of the flute or the trill in a flute, you have to give that all yourself. There's nothing in a flute that gives it that life that you can give it with your own voice or your own power. Um, the vibrato isn't the best, so I can't trill as well as other people can. Yeah. But the tones are a lot different depending on the flute. This one is a G. Um, I'm working on getting a drone which has two flutes and one plays at a constant note yeah. and then the other one you can kind of play like a regular flute. Yeah. They're really really awesome but they're really really expensive also unless you make them yourself. So uh, this would be hopefully somewhat in tune. I just polished it two days ago and it's still soaking in the oils a little bit so it's a little, <coughs> it's a little off but we'll see how she works. So that's how the deeper one sounds. Yeah. Um, you can overplay it like I do at the end of just about everything that I play, yeah. and it makes like that hawk squeak. That's what they call it. It's like a hawk squeak or an eagle shrill. Um, that's kind of popular in Native American music. You'll hear that a lot if you listen to music. So, do you want to walk down and show? You yeah. can show that to people, and we can. You guys so want to check them out? Air, you're actually making the sound for a like harmonica as opposed to a traditional. Slightly, you're actually moving the air with your tongue in the back of your throat and your diaphragm. Um, you make like a hook sound a lot of times to get different pitches and different tones to that. So yeah. Anybody wants to check it out? It's very light. Very, uh, very um, seasoned. And this guy has seen a lot of miles. Very small. Very small. Very tough. Yeah. Because of the uh, instrument, they're very, very smooth and cock. Yes. And they sand it and they put it together. Yep. Well, this one I believe they cut these in half. Yeah. And then they drill out that center. But yeah, because they, they drill they, out the center. Yeah, they burn that out. Yeah. Okay. So the center is actually burned out through here, yeah. all the way up to about this point, mm -hmm. and then it's solid, and then there's another hole here. And the chamber comes up underneath the fetish, and it blows the air over the top. So it, it kind of, the air doesn't actually go directly through the entire flute, it actually goes through over the top of the, the sound chamber. It plays very much like a recorder. Yeah, they play very much like a recorder. So if you're good with a recorder, you can go with a native flute. Thank you. Come around the other way so you guys can see over there if you want. Are there any other questions about anything? What other instruments are there? Are there other instruments that play? Sorry. Yes, there are. There's um there are rattles which is exactly what it sounds like. Okay, it's a gourd that's hollowed out and has beans or whatever inside there. So they played those too. They played a lot of things like that. Anything that would make noise, they played. Um, they didn't have a CD player, so they made their own music. Um, drums were huge. Drum, you couldn't have any kind of celebration without a drum. Seniors, types of like cedars and they tend to 
So, I guess one more thing before I let you go. You guys probably have somewhere else to be pretty soon here. Um, I want to talk with you a little about the first Thanksgiving. Most people know kind of a little bit about the first Thanksgiving. Um, there's the story that we all heard in school, right, when we were younger. And then there's the actual story of Thanksgiving. Just a couple of um, fun facts about Thanksgiving. You know, um, the, when the Mayflower and the other boats came over, the other ships came over, they actually um, brought with them, all these people brought with everything that they had. And so they brought seeds from their native country. And when they brought those over, they thought, fully intended to have a beautiful garden and be able to, to eat and you know harvest and that sort of thing. And a couple of things happened. You know, they, they tried to plant them in the spring, but there were two really huge deciding factors as to whether or not all that was going to grow. Can anyone think of what they might be? Well, the weather was a huge one. The weather, yeah. Pardon? Weather, also, soil. They don't have the same soil everywhere. So just because they grew somewhere, doesn't mean they're gonna grow where they ended up landing. And the problem was, is that they didn't realize that. So they weren't prepared. And so they, they harvested in the fall and they didn't have very much. Now the Native Americans, they'd had very little contact with them, the American Indians, and so, the American Indians didn't know what to think of these people. <coughs> they didn't know whether they were going to be worrying on them or if they were okay or what. So they didn't do anything for a while. They went through the winter, the Native Americans or the American Indians were watching them throughout the winter. They were watching their makeshift houses fall apart. They were watching them starve. And they made the decision to step forth and help them. So there's a Native American by the name of Squanto. Anybody ever heard of Squanto? Okay. <laughs> he could actually speak English. So he was very instrumental in helping them. And so when spring came along, the first thing he did was show them how to, how to actually um, plant corn and show them how that they planted. They actually did a lot of three sister planting. Has anybody ever planted? Did they have a garden where they might have put the three sisters in there? They may know what the three sisters are. Okay, some people. They're beans, corn, and squash. They were planted in a huge mound. The corn was planted first as it started to grow up a couple feet. Then the beans were planted so that it could crawl up the trellis of the stock. And then they planted um, either pumpkin or squash underneath. And that would go along the bottom and it would put nutrients into that soil for the other plants and it would also um, choke out whatever weeds were down there and make good ground cover. And so they taught them how to harvest food too and how to dry food and how to keep food. It's, it's a whole other ball game over here than where they're from due to, like I said, weather and things like that. And so after their first harvest, they decided they wanted to have a Thanksgiving. Okay, and so they laid out on, in, on Main Street, the only Main Street in town, they laid out a gigantic table benches invited the American Indians to come. Well, they did. They expected a couple, maybe four or five. Well, they were really surprised because 90 showed up. <laughs> you can imagine having Thanksgiving at your house, expecting four or five people and 90 people come to your door. So they were cooking for a while. And so they laid everything out on the table and they all sat down and the natives looked at the table and they were didn't have any idea what that was. They'd never seen a table ever. So they never sat there. <laughs> they sat in a circle around the table on the ground because that's all they ate. So Thanksgiving, I know we have Thanksgiving and whoever has to cook it is in that kitchen all day and chances are they made pies the day before. So you're cooking, 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 but it's usually over after Thanksgiving. But the, the first technical Thanksgiving, I guess, that we consider Thanksgiving, lasted over three days. So basically they would eat, people would come and go, and then they would come back and eat again. <laughs> they would come and go. So it was a very long process. 
So Thanksgiving was just a little bit different than um, the picture that you see where they're all sitting at the table passing the mashed potatoes. Also, think about where they were. So that they landed at Plymouth Rock, what would they have had on their Thanksgiving table? Fish. Fish, yeah. They had fish, mussels, and clams. Yeah, they probably didn't have a turkey. <clears throat> okay, they might have had wild game, but they probably wouldn't have had a turkey there. Not like we know them. And so their, their Thanksgiving would have been a whole lot different than ours. And I don't think they had any leftovers after all those people were there. But after three days of cooking, there was probably nothing left at all. So kind of like when my kids come and eat and there's nothing left. Yep. So, <laughs> but anyway, so this first Thanksgiving was just a little bit different. And, it, and you know, and I say this not only just as an American Indian, but as someone who has looked into the history of Thanksgiving. I really don't think that the people that came over in the ships would have made it without native intervention. They just didn't know what they were doing. And so once they figured it out, they, they did just fine. But um, in the beginning, they needed a little help. It's like we all do. Okay, are there any last questions about anything? Yes? Where did the idea of a turkey come from? Why would we do turkeys? You know, I think, you know, I think, you know, the thing is with food is you, you're going to, you're going to um, hunt whatever you have around you. <coughs> Excuse me. I think eventually pheasant and wild fowl and turkeys probably came to play. I'm not exactly sure exactly when that became the unofficial bird of the season. <coughs> Sorry, I love this cold. But um, turkey and ham are definitely the staples of everyone's dinner now. What Yes, he did. He did. That's right. That's, that's what yep. I mean. Because he said he wasn't that proud because it was a scavenger. Yeah, it's a scavenger. Well, speaking of a scavenger, have you ever seen an eagle hunt? They'll eat anything. They scavenge around too. So they're majestic and beautiful, but they're also another bird that scavenges around. <clears throat> you see them out in the field digging up whatever they can find to eat out there. Are there any last questions about anything? If anybody would like to come up and take a look at any of the instruments or my drum um, or Michael's flutes, if you didn't get a good look, you're welcome to come on up here um, and take a look. If you want to look at what I have on, you're welcome to look at that as well. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you guys taking time out. They, because of their physical characteristics and the fact that they have a special time of month, mm -hmm. um, they can play the big drum because that particular time of their month they're extremely powerful mm -hmm. and it would overpower mm -hmm. what they're trying to do with the drum circle. Um, that's what I was doing. There I am. Interesting. Yeah. But I'm So usually it was another tribe that they would marry. Sister tribe. Okay. Yeah. And then they would go. The men would go live with their family, the woman's family. Yeah. Oh. But they never stated, you know, for a year, and we just you left your family and yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, it was really great, but it's not something we can afford. Did they, yeah. after a year, <laughs> they could move out, it was, it was really awesome. start their own, you know, have their own teepee, their own lodge? Or if they didn't, they ended up just hating each other, they would just split up. He would just move out. 
and that would be like say okay that's that's, that's yeah they're they're done and then there was a certain period sometimes they had kids in between there sometimes they would yeah and and sometimes they wouldn't that's, maybe that was the problem and the kids usually stayed with their mom a lot of until they were certain age yeah the boys when they were 13 then they'd be yeah yeah they didn't take my time yeah. that i took my time and then there was stuff that she so couldn't teach him right so that he would have to be taught by the Male member of my tribe or my dad. Mm -hmm. It's just fun playing with them outside. Yeah, it's. Um, they're used a lot of times for healing, uh, the, especially when you get into deeper, longer haunting. Well, I looked, I looked it up because I actually looked it up before I came here. The Even in today's science, the main pronunciation was way better. Oh, I got to look this up again. Effect. And then I saw the lock. So, so yeah. 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 The yeah. There's it was a lot of Ojibwe or Ojibwe. Yeah. 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 Like, so, I was going to ask yeah. you that question because Sounds I always try to look at things up before I pronounce yeah. them, and I had heard it that way, and I looked yeah. it up, yeah. and it came out. Every clue is going to sound different, even if you get to the identical clue, it's going to sound different. Oh, I see. Oh, so it's going to ask you. Yeah, because I have a really good friend from White Earth, and she calls me. It's actually a small, separate flute. And I say, no, we're not. It's just a So we fight all the time. Okay. Which size was steady? Yeah, you want that steady, um, that steady note. No, they weren't all just in one place. No, they weren't. They, they ended up settling in, yep, yep. in Minnesota, Wisconsin, yep. and, and, and then tried them to um, it's, Canada. It's, it's a little it's difficult. Yeah, it's like... Yes, we did. We, um, we did, and so did all those tribes from Almost Illinois. Like That's why we don't situation. have any federally recognized tribes anymore because they all left. Well, when you just um, you without the AIC, the American Indian Center in Chicago, my mother didn't have anybody. Very few. Yeah. 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 But with, when that opened, to after World War II, and then the United States tried to come back. But none of them have been able to become federally recognized. I know. That's a lot of hoops you have to go through. But see, I had. I would confuse my brain. No, what did she say? Women play flutes, but mm. not recording. Yeah. Or what did she say? Okay. When it comes to the, she said these are the dance flutes. You know, <laughs> in, our in our tribe, uh, the flute is a male instrument. Um, it's more has to be probably with the phallic symbolism than anything else. Um, so women played a lot of the drum, men played a lot of the flute. Yeah. When a man yeah. was interested in courting a woman, he would sit outside her teepee lodge, whatever it was, and he would play with a party. And if she came out and drank the tea, he was in. He was in. You know, he was in a, he was in a good spot. If he didn't have her come out and drink his tea and his tea went cold, then <laughs> that is that hanging a little low. But in fact, I made a fool of himself. But, but, but um, oh yeah, okay. yeah. The more you try, so probably the better off you were. You know, you got to make sure you're actually interested. The first time probably ain't gonna work. That second or third time, if she comes out, you know, was never passed down. Yeah. Difficult. So we can't track. No, is that mark is really hard? hard. Yeah. yeah, very yes. hard to track. Yeah, you can definitely check them out. Don't have any names. And usually, it's like mother's name. Made by high spirit flutes. You can check them out. Yeah, and then in my case, my mother is white. I have my fetishes special yeah, made for you. You can buy their stock fetishes, but I have my fetishes special made. She did. I have a certain sign for you. She did. I kind of have an idea. That one I had in mind. Um, five years old, this you one they had no, there for me. No, I agree with that. Um, and you don't remember them. So, so yeah, they're yeah. the same birds. That's her research. They're both yeah. red tail hawks. And then there's nowhere to look. This one look, nobody will look down, was supposed right. to be a red tail hawk. Yeah. I think <laughs> it kind of well, very symbolizes more maybe. You could do a grave search. I don't know. We did a grave some search on my grandfather. And that's got a little bit more detail. Yeah, it's got some more detail. It's definitely got some more detail to it. And I've got a couple that have stones on them, they've got uh, turquoise yeah, or something embedded the, in the wood. Or, like, and even that changes the picture. And it was more the instrument itself. And okay, on you said this is where you will. Mm -hmm. Now where is the arrow that it goes over? You just go down and then around. No, it comes, comes up underneath and then it comes out this hole right here. So, maybe it was so maybe it was that fetish right there? I can see that. And then it blows across that hole. So there's actually very little air that goes in this tube. It just blows across the top. But, but you're saying the air also goes this way. Yeah, it goes up. There's a little hole. Yeah, this is solid right here, all the way through. And then there's a there's a hole the that, trees through that I can't see. Yeah, that you can't see, and it comes up and then goes across. And then turn that over. And it's like down the way. 
Yeah. How do you, what do you think? I mean, you don't want them to sit in the sun. No, you don't want them to sit in the sun. You don't you want, want to breathe. You don't want to breathe. It's definitely a thing. I just love that. When did you get your water? Too cold is that the worst thing I've had. Thank you. So I think I'm going to make that. You might have to go and buy your coffee. Mm -hmm. I ordered it from a company so, uh, that it's from. Um, uh, I keep them very well. Traditionally, like, there's not I play them once a week. Yeah. 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 Well, I ordered them from a company mm -hmm. that actually makes yeah. yeah. You know how long it would take me to roll it? I mean, yeah. somebody yeah. asked me if I did that. I was like, no. But I was wondering if it was a the jingle dress, but well, the, the jingle dress actually started in the 1920s, and so it's coming on to about a hundred years And so this this dress, mm -hmm. I'm way of so yeah, the jingle dress uh, have been around for a So the snuff can has been around for a while. I don't know. I started. Mine, I don't know, I was wondering how to keep it. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know that. I see that part of the version. Even class, I mean, they could be on that. Oh, yeah, I would think so. Because the old gym were kind of also the clearest as well. And if you're not careful, you can do that. Yeah, I'm sure. That probably is. These never have. You don't have. I think there are. Yeah, it's just a few. There's a reservation.